NBC 7 News, the Chicago area's number one news, with Floyd Calvert, Kathy Brown, Jerry Tam, and Jim Rose. The verdict was guilty. A federal jury in Denver found Timothy McVeigh guilty on all counts in the deadliest terrorist attack ever on American soil. We have details of this historic event and reaction from people in the Chicago area. Good evening, Chicago. I'm Floyd Calvert. And I'm Kathy Brock. The verdict comes a little more than two years after a truck bomb exploded at the federal building in Oklahoma City, killing 168 people. The verdict means Timothy McVeigh could face a death sentence for triggering the bomb. The jury found him guilty on all charges. Count one, conspiracy to use a weapon of mass destruction. Count two, use of the weapon for mass destruction. Count three, destruction by an explosive. And counts four through 11, eight counts of first degree murder representing the federal agents who died. The jury returns to the court on Wednesday to determine what sentence to levy on McVeigh for his crimes. The effect of that deadly blast on April 19, 1995, rippled across the country. It was a day of shock, sorrow, and anger. Here in Chicago tonight, strong reaction to the McVeigh verdict. ABC's Kent Ninamia is live in the loop with more on the story tonight. Kent. And Kathy, as soon as that verdict was read, people started voicing their opinions about it. It happened down here on the streets of Chicago, and especially on talk radio, where an overwhelming number of people who called in were in support of the verdict. Take him in his chair, out to the parking lot, bunch of dynamite underneath, and blow him up. What's fair is fair. WLS Talk Radio's Gary Meyer says he wants vengeance, and just about everyone calling in their opinion on the verdict agrees with him. They want Timothy McVeigh to die the same way he's convicted of killing. However, one caller disagreed, saying he believes McVeigh is innocent. There's too many inconsistencies in the, uh, in the prosecution's case. So like you said earlier, the, the, the defense must have fell apart and gave in. And there are those who believe McVeigh is guilty, but don't want him put to death. It's unfortunate that there's so much a sense of such vengeance on all the people that were involved, the victims, whatever. And I know that they probably feel that he does deserve the death, the death penalty, but I don't think it's right to, um, to kill anybody. I think life imprisonment. But the vast majority of people we're hearing from this afternoon want to see Timothy McVeigh executed. They say it's the only punishment that fits his crimes. Whatever he gets, he deserves, you know, whatever he gets. I don't agree with the death penalty, but if that's what they choose that he made, then that's what he deserves. Justice has finally uh, uh, came into play here, and uh, may he rest in hell. What do you think they should do to him? Uh, I think he should definitely get the death penalty. The jury will take up that issue on Wednesday during the penalty phase of the trial. The jury will determine whether Timothy McVeigh will live or will die. Reporting live from downtown, Kent Ninomia, ABC 7 News. Kathy. Okay, Kent, thanks. And we're going to have more on the McVeigh, Oklahoma bombing verdict and its <clears throat> impact in Chicago and across the country tonight on ABC 7 News at 10. Floyd. Undercover audio tapes from the silver shovel investigation of Jesse Evans, the alderman from Chicago's 21st Ward, were released today. Prosecutors say those tapes helped to prove that Evans took bribes in exchange for political favors. The tapes are key evidence in the silver shovel investigation of corruption at Chicago City Hall. ABC 7's Paul Meinke is in the newsroom now, and he has the full story. Paul? Floyd, nowhere on any of the undercover tapes does Jesse Evans directly ask for or demand any money in return for favors. Nonetheless, prosecutors say they are bribes that are clearly implied, and for the first time on these undercover audio tapes, we hear the voice, albeit somewhat muddied, of government mole John Christopher. In early March of 94, then-Alderman Jesse Evans had lunch with government informant John Christopher. Christopher said he wanted Evans' help in getting a city street sweeper to clean a private construction site at a Southside church. Evans suggested that he could use some help with an upcoming fundraiser, but Christopher, who was secretly wearing a wire, laid down some ground rules. I want to go into a situation where I run like a switch, switch watch. Okay? You tell me what you need, because I don't want to hear anything. What you need, and that's it. Because I don't deal with stuff. I'm going to tell you again, I don't deal with it. Because I don't need someone coming back. 
Later on that same tape, which jurors have heard, Christopher makes clear to Evans that the IRS need not know about their arrangement. So we understand this. Oh, yeah. I'm not recording this. I hope you're not either. Okay. Evans is recorded on four separate tapes, taking a total of over $7,300 in payments from Christopher's fictitious partner, undercover FBI agent Mark Sophia. The last two took place in a car outside a now closed Southside restaurant. The agent explaining in one of them how he derived at the dollar amount. And I've been giving you about 60%. Yeah. So come up with that, and I just rounded it up to 2,200. So these are that's a bundle of a thousand. Here's another bundle of a thousand, and here's two hundred dollar bills. 2,200. Okay. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Evans has insisted that he accepted money, but only as contributions to his political campaign and ward funds. Although the audio tapes of the secret recordings have been released, the judge in the case has declined to release similar undercover videotapes, at least until tomorrow, giving Evans' lawyer a chance to ask the appeals court to block their publication. Live in the newsroom, Paul Meinke, ABC 7 News. Kathy? Okay, Paul, thanks. Police tonight have arrested a man and charged him with murder in the brutal car hijacking that happened last week. It started on Thursday at a Southside strip mall. 22-year-old Granato Brown and two accomplices allegedly trying to rob Joseph Jones and a friend. Police say the victims were then forced into Jones' Chevy Blazer. Then there was a five-car crash on Lakeshore Drive after Jones tried to grab the wheel of that vehicle. Brown allegedly shot and killed Jones when he tried to escape. Brown was arrested when he sought treatment for his injuries. Police say that he's given a partial confession. In court today, Brown was denied bond. His accomplices are still on the loose tonight. Summertime, if and when it gets here, means lakefront festivals and lakefront traffic jams. But a new study suggests ways to ease the congestion. The study comes from the Chicago Department of Transportation. It has designated five summer weekends as traffic red alert days. The uh, lakefront has been uh, so popular in, in recent years um, that it's caused some access problems. And uh, the plan is really focused on, on helping people um, uh, get to the lakefront and enjoy all the various activities. The proposals include bus-only lanes on Columbus Drive, linking the museums to the loop. Highway advisory radio would update traffic conditions. An underground walkway would connect Buckingham Fountain to the lakefront. And trolley-style shuttle buses would move people around the museum campus. Public hearings on the proposals set to begin in three to four weeks. Legend grew a little larger last night. Later on in sports, the Bulls and the fans today still talking about the shot that jolted the Jazz. Next, a live report from Utah on tough times for a Jazz fan named Michael Jordan. Also, why the White House is angry about a newspaper ad. Details coming up. At the men's warehouse, what makes our big and tall programs unusual is the prices. We offer quality suits in big and tall sizes from $220. I guarantee it. When you consider all that goes into making the new Oldsmobile 88 irresistible, like its roomy six-passenger interior, its many extras, its affordable 23200 MSRP, and the fact that 88 is the only full-size car to earn Consumer's Digest Best Buy Award an unprecedented seven years in a row, we couldn't resist adding one more. Now, get $1,500 cash back. Today I got stuck at the office again. I came to Dominic's to their chef's collection. Everything is fresh and it's like homemade. I am going to get the oven roasted vegetables. And they put rosemary and garlic in it. Then I'm going to add the gorgonzola ribbon pasta made with walnuts and dried cherries. And everybody thinks I did it. <laughs> the chef's collection plus aisles of fresh values. Only at Dominic's for people who know their food. That's my goal in life to never have to run and cook anymore. Cancer has changed my life. A few years ago, I was diagnosed with a rare form of leukemia and told that I had little chance of survival. This is Mary Beth. She was one of my nurses. Dr. Siff was with me during the hardest time, which was my bone marrow transplant. I can't believe you have long hair. This is Marilyn. She was my social worker and also an incredibly special person to me. It makes me feel good to know that so many people cared about me and still care about me today. Father's Day. 
Nah. No way. Carson's ribs. Cool. Carson's ribs. The perfect gift for dad. And me. To place your Father's Day order, call now. 1-800-GET-RIBS. Chicago Bulls fans are still crowing about last night's heart-stopping victory in game one of the NBA playoffs. It was a case of Bulls magic at the buzzer. Michael Jordan hitting a 21-footer in the final seconds to beat the Utah Jazz 81-82 to in game one. And what can we say? Bull fans are confident, and you know what? We have a right to be. I think they're kind of pick, picking up the pace a little bit now. Since Mike, um, he's got over his little depression They. <laughs> I think the Bulls will win by 10, 15 points or Wednesday. I'll be at the game. Lucky guy. The next test coming on Wednesday in Game 2 in the best of seven series between the Bulls and Utah. Two teams are going to score off once again at the United Center. What Utah may need to win the playoff with the Bulls is their own Michael Jordan. And you may be surprised to know that they have one. But that Michael Jordan is still in Utah. And Chris Van Oker of our sister station in Salt Lake City joins us now with details. Chris? Floyd, because Kathy Brock is an old, old dear friend, I've got a bit of a scoop for you. Michael Jordan now wishes that last second shot hadn't gone in and also wishes that Carl Malone had made both his free throws. I know it sounds incredible, but that's what Jordan told us this morning in Salt Lake in this exclusive interview. As over it came as no surprise that number 23 would shoot and swish this shot. Just ask Michael Jordan himself. Can't beat Michael Jordan on his last shot. You know he's going to make that. And who knows better about what Michael Jordan can do on a basketball court than Michael Jordan? It's funny, but in person, Jordan looks quite different than he does on TV. But watching Michael drain jumper after jumper, you know he's the real deal. When's the first time people started kidding you about it? Uh, seventh grade, we were doing the broad jump test. And my CE teacher said, uh, what did he say? He said, come on, Michael Jordan, let's see some uh, air. And you know, what they say about Michael Jordan is true. He doesn't act like a big superstar. He just seems like one of the guys. This Michael doesn't want the fame, pressure, or even money the other Michael has. But there's one thing the Chicago Jordan has that the Utah Jordan wants, the God-given ability to play ball. Oh, yeah, some support from his family would be nice, too. My cousin might have the name, but he sure don't got the game. <laughs> well, don't be too sure about that. Just watch. Okay, Michael Jordan. Seven seconds left. Game one. Okay. You got one shot. Try and beat the Jazz. Okay. I'm Brian Russell. You're Brian Russell. But well, what did you expect? After all, he is Michael Jordan. Now, in case you're curious, we also looked for a Scotty Pippen in Utah. Couldn't find one. We also tried to find a Dennis Rodman, but Kathy, I guess there's only one Dennis Rodman, isn't there? There's only one. You can keep your Michael Jordan, too, Chris. How many times did you shoot that, Chris? <laughs> I'll be absolutely, you know, we're honest here in Utah. <laughs> Took one take. Good. Say hi to your dad. We want to see the whole okay. thing. Chris, thanks. It's a deal. Thank you. Turning out of dollar signs tonight, the White House is not too happy with the newspaper ad placed by the American Physical Therapy Association. The ad shows President Clinton in a wheelchair, on crutches, and then walking after his knee surgery. A spokesperson for the White House says that it is against policy to use the president's image for endorsement of any product or service. Mm -hmm. The association said it was just trying to appeal to a large audience. The association can now expect a letter from the White House legal office. That's a good cause. Also in dollar signs, Deerfield-based Walgreens has averted a strike by union pharmacists. Union members approved a new four-year contract late last night, just before the midnight strike deadline. The union had postponed an earlier strike deadline last week. Major issue in that dispute was salary. And the price of stamps may be going up. The Postal Service reported printing up millions of rate change stamps. Those are the type that are marked with an initial. This one is H instead of the price. The Postal Service has indicated it may ask for this increase before the end of the year, that it could be one or two cents per cent. On Wall Street today, the Dow Jones Industrial Average dropping 41 points to close today 7,289, volume totaling 435 million shares. The Nasdaq market was up today four points. Chilly, wet weather again today. 
Phil Schwartz will have tomorrow's forecast when we come back. And a little bit later on, Bulls coach Phil Jackson will not be going to Orlando. Jim Rose here to explain his scores coming up next. If you've been diagnosed with asthma, you may be eligible to participate in a research study for a currently available asthma medication. Participants will not be asked to discontinue their current asthma therapy. Call Asthma Research Associates, 1-800-RESEARCH. There's a place where a waterfall dazzles as the most celebrated in the world. And a place where you can get lost in the beat of the world's largest Caribbean festival. There's a place that will lure you with the most lakes in the world. It's here in Ontario, Canada. It's waiting for you just a few hours away. Discover Ontario this summer. Call today for your free vacation planning kit. A customer in Chicago writes, My neighbor and I live in identical townhouses. Last summer, we both kept our thermostat at 74 degrees, but his electric bill was always lower. What gives? Well, maybe your neighbor had his air conditioner tuned up in the spring. That could save up to 20% on energy costs. This year, why not get your air conditioners tuned at the same time? That might be a real nice way to bring neighbors together. For more energy answers, call ComEd. Hard work will never be enough. If you expect to have money for children, college, and retirement, you'll need to invest. Just like everything else, you'll want to do it well. Find a smart financial consultant that you can talk to. One that can help you plan a strategy and then stick to it. The important thing is to start early. Today would be fine. Smith Barney. They make money the old-fashioned way. They earn it. Jerry's taking the day off. Phil Schwartz here with the weather. When is this ever going yeah, to improve? Yeah, if this just keeps going and going and going. going. Uh, it, it's it's going. To, yeah, it is a plot. Well, summer's not so, coming this so year. Like city people. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're the ones <laughs> They've responsible. Their weather. They'll get theirs. Uh, we are going to see an improvement in the weather, especially as we head into the day tomorrow. We'll see more and more in the way of sunshine, but temperature's still a little bit below normal, but finally getting back into the 70s. Today, we did see some rain, especially this morning. Some of it were rather significant, like Glencoe coming in with over a half an inch, Valparaiso about seven-tenths of an inch. For those of you in Kankakee, you saw about a half an inch of rain, lesser amounts across much of the western and southern suburbs, Park Forest just five-hundredths of an inch and less than a tenth of an inch in Wheaton. Now, the main area of rain is well off to our east from Detroit back down toward Indianapolis. Some heavier thunderstorms now beginning to erupt in parts of Ohio where they have seen some significant flooding. So most of the shower activity is over, but we're still going to have to contend with the cloud cover for probably about the next 12 hours or so. You can see how the clouds are actually backing up from the east toward the west, but you get west of a line from Moline to Rockford to Milwaukee. Skies are clear, and where their skies are clear, temperatures are significantly warmer, like 79 in Minneapolis and 78 in Des Moines compared to our 65 degrees, which is as warm as we have been for the entire day. Right along the lakefront with the breeze coming in off the lake, 55 degrees right now, 61 at Midway, and 64 degrees in Aurora. Relative humidity, 78%. We have a northeast wind at 10, gusting as high as 22. That's 65. That's our high for the day. That's still 11 degrees below average, and the record high, wouldn't that feel good? 92 degrees set back in 1944. All right, the area of rain that has been uh, just hanging around here for the past day or so is finally going to move a little bit farther to the east. Now, that's going to allow for some sunshine during the day tomorrow and more sunshine as we head into Wednesday. This system stalls out, and I think most of the showers and storms with that will also stay back to our west, so at least three dry days coming up beginning with tomorrow. High temperatures tomorrow getting into the 70s, 60s along the lake. You can see the 80s holding just off to our west. No 80s in this forecast, but at least we'll see some 70s. Few showers this evening, lower 50s along the lake, mid-60s inland, lows tonight near 50. The showers will end, and then the skies start to clear tomorrow. Warmer, still cool, though, along the lakefront, a high temperature near 70 degrees, 73 degrees on Wednesday. Matter of fact, lower 70s for much of this upcoming week. Maybe some showers late Friday, but significantly cooler still along the lakefront. So definitely better than what we saw today, but uh, still below average. These are in the 60s there. Trouble is, Taft is coming back tomorrow, and he'll uh -huh. tear that all up. 
Well, I hope not. I hope not, too. Clear up and headed higher. <laughs> Phil, thanks. You bet. Breaking story tonight, investigators on the scene of an accident at the South Shore commuter station that has left a woman critically injured. It happened about 5.15. A 38-year-old woman somehow became trapped between a train and the platform at the East Randolph Street station. We understand she is in critical condition tonight and is, at this hour, in surgery at Northwestern Hospital. We cannot tell you exactly what kind of injuries she sustained. Her name is not being released. Alan Krasheski is in the newsroom to preview what's coming up in the news at 10 o'clock tonight. Floyd and Kathy, coming up on our news after tonight's World Music Awards, there's a new study out on breastfeeding, how it can protect babies from some common health problems. Plus, Diana's dresses on the auction block, what they're likely to go for. Join Diane Burns and me tonight at 10. Kathy, Floyd. What did she pay for him, Alan? Thank you. Bulls getting ready for Wednesday night. Stop on the road to the ring. And a big finish for the Golden Bear at his Memorial Golf Tournament. Jim Rose with sports next. Balanced nutrition for lasting energy. Power bar. Power on. We all inhabit a place that frankly gets on our nerves. We gotta get out of that place. And a celebrity cruise can get us out of that place. Celebrity cruises. Exceeding expectations. Awarded five stars by Fieldings and the top premium cruise line rating by Berlitz. What does it take to be innovative? Take a look at Frigidaire. It's the first ever range with warming areas on top and bottom. Both keep dinner ready until you are. And take the Frigidaire Gallery dishwasher with advanced new features to wash a half a load at a time or a whole load with just six gallons of water. And look at the first built-in water filter because now clean ice and water is within reach. So be first in line for up to $200 cash back on all Frigidaire Gallery appliances now at Best Buy. What's the worst four-letter word your child can say? Can't. 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 I can't add that. I can't read. I can't learn. Here at Sylvan, we believe the children can do anything they, they put their minds to. The first thing we do at Sylvan is figure out what's holding the child back. And we can actually determine what skill gaps they have. And when you give them back the skills that they've missed, you give them back their self-esteem. I can't becomes I can. That's the skill of difference. Sylvan Learning Center. For better grades tomorrow, call 1-800-EDUCATE today. Couldn't have been better. I know. I just jumped out of my seat. I jumped out of my seat when I saw the shot. Wow. But then I've seen him do that before, so you know, it's not it. surprising. He lives for that stuff. Just one day after the Bulls' Game 1 victory over Utah in the NBA Finals, and all of Chicago is still talking about the shot heard around the world. Michael Jordan put yet another dagger in the heart of yet another team, and they're ready to do it again on Wednesday. Mark Chanowski reports from the United Center. The national media descended on the United Center this morning, anxious to get the stars' reflections on the Game 1 drama last night. Just how did Michael Jordan feel about hitting another last-second winning shot? When you come through in that circumstances, it's the greatest feeling in the world. It's great confidence. If I've been shooting the ball bad up to that point, that, that certainly could give you the confidence to start shooting the ball better, I hope. And how is Scottie Pippen's injured left foot after 43 outstanding minutes last night? I'm going to continue to do my therapy, and... Uh, It'll take a lot of the soreness out, and that allows me to do things on the court that I normally can do. Scotty Pippen is a champion and a competitor, and barring a bone sticking out through his foot, I knew Scott was going to play. You guys was the one that wanted to get the hype up, but I knew Scott was going to play from the start. And what does Dennis Rodman think about Carl Malone's crucial missed free throws in the closing seconds? I'm not surprised. You know, he's 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 known to miss free throws in, in a plus situation, so, you know, He's still a great player, but he's known to miss uh, free throws in the, when the game's on the line. And then there's the question that just won't go away. Will Jordan stay with the Bulls after this season? As long as we're playing the game of basketball, and Phil Jackson is my coach, you know, I'm going with the organization wherever they go. The players would love to focus in on the series at hand, but the media just won't let them. 
And for Bulls fans looking forward to another possible finals party next June, it's looking more and more like Michael and Phil are ready to join forces for another championship run. From the United Center, Mark Schanowski, ABC 7 News. Well, Mark, you just about scratched the Orlando Magic off the job list for Phil Jackson. Former Detroit coach Chuck Daly reportedly will sign on for three years at $5 million per season to coach those troubled children in the Magic Kingdom. No news conference today. Daly was out at a golf outing, but the Magic say they are negotiating a deal with his agent. You look at uh, what resources are available to you, which ones are out there as uh, possibilities, and then you have to make your best decision uh, with what you know. And uh, at this time, uh, we've elected to uh, negotiate uh, with Chuck and his people. Elsewhere in sports, they finally finished the rain-shortened Memorial Golf Tournament today, and V.J. Wow. Singh walked off with his first winner's check in two years. Good for $342,000. Tournament oh, founder Jack no. Nicklaus finished eighth, his best showing of the year. Tiger Woods finished 19 strokes back. At the Ameritech Senior Open yesterday, senior golfer Jerry McGee got caught in a rules violation. After a poor sand shot, McGee inadvertently hit the sand with his golf club. Tournament officials saw it and assessed a two-stroke penalty that cost him about $28,000 in place money. Poor Jerry. In baseball, Dodgers second baseman Wilton Guerrero got an eight-game suspension today after his broken bat was discovered to contain cork by umpires in St. Louis yesterday. One of the last guys who got caught Corking a bat was Albert Bell when he was with Cleveland. And finally, the match race to determine the world's fastest human came to a disappointing conclusion when Michael Johnson pulled a hamstring, but winner Donovan Bailey thought the injury was more in Johnson's head. Michael Johnson's not a sprinter. He runs at 200 meters. So I know if I caught him coming into the stretch, I mean, it was over. And it was over. I mean, he, he cried foul. I guess he caught an injury. Oh, boy. I'll meet him again. Though. He didn't pull up. He's just a coward. Johnson Bailey today apologized to Johnson for his remarks about calling him a coward. Still, Donovan Bailey walks away with $1.5 million for a 18, 19 second race, something like that. And the loser got a half million. He got a half million of currency. I like Johnson's idea. They should have threw it all in the bucket and said, winner take off. Whoever gets to the finish line yeah. first grabs the bucket. Yeah. Pretty good money for 19 yeah. seconds worth. Uh -huh. Say our thanks. That's terrific. That's it for ABC 7 News at 6. Thanks for joining us tonight. For Jim Rose and Phil Schwartz, I'm Kathy Brock. And I'm Floyd Calder, and I hope you have a safe evening.